Hey, what's up you two? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make your very own church for all of your city building needs. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. Here is the amount of space required to make your church a 23 by 31 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which you are more than welcome to make and encouraged to make if you are planning out your very own city. Here are all of the materials required to make your church. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. Believe it or not, we are only missing a couple which we will grab later. Step one, ladies and gentlemen, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made it. From this corner, we count to the right one, two, three, four, five, and then inwards one, two, three, four, five, six. This is where everything begins. Place a row of five light grey concrete going right. One, two, three, four, five. Then extend backwards by two. One, two. Extend to the right by one. Dig a hole in the ground. This is going to signify where the door is going to go. And then on the opposite side of this hole, place two more light grey concrete going right. Extend forwards by two. One, two. Go to the right by four. One, two, three, four. Extend backwards now by five. One, two, three, four, five. Extend towards you by one. To the right by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In one. Go to the right by five. One, two, three, four, five. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we essentially have to make that exact same shape one more time so we're actually going to extend to the right and we're going to extend all the way to the right until we would line up with where we very first started if that makes sense to you you can see over there we want this block to line up with the first block that we ever placed we then want to take this block that lines up and extend it inwards by five one two three four five Extend outwards one and then extend forwards by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In one and then extend right. So you will know that you've done this correctly if it kind of looks like an outline of Squidward's house. It kind of does, right? I mean, it's not too far off. Well, now that we have accomplished this, I want you to grab the specific specifically specific smooth quartz block and I want you to place a row of three quartz block extending upwards on this inward part of light grey concrete here on the right so you want to do three rows one two three rows of quartz block here on the right side and also on the left side specifically on these two rows so one two, three, just like this. If you like, you can even do this on the back because it's equivalent. So on the back here, one, two, three. You can kind of see how these two parts are very similar to each other. So one, two, three, like this. So now that we have all of these rows of quartz, what I want you to do on the front, and we'll do this on the back also, by the way, is we want to take the two rows of three rows <laughs> of smooth quartz, if that makes sense, and we want to place inward and upward quartz blocks that will eventually connect to each other. So they will join to each other above where the entrance is. You'll be able to see that in just a second. So this is the shape that we're looking for. Easy peasy. We want to have the same thing on the back as well. There's a slight design difference on the back and the front, but if you just extend the blocks inwards and upwards and inwards and upwards, they will eventually connect together. I would recommend, if you don't know where they are going to connect, kind of do both sides in equal measure, and eventually they will just join at an apex like that. So, again, easy peasy. 
So, now that you've done that, on the back of the church, we'll, we'll do this first, right? We'll connect the bottom of the church together, right? You should, hopefully, be able to see where the middle of the back of the church is. It's here, so where the apex is, you just follow it down. On this middle block, I want you to place one, two, I'm so bad at placing glass, two, three, four, we're looking for five, five, black glass pane on top of each other, and then we want to take the fourth block and we want to extend it left and right to make a cross. Perfecto. You can then fill the rest of the back of the church in using smooth quartz. And that is pretty much that. There's only one window back here, and it's the... We might even turn this into a stained glass window as well, but we'll leave that up to you a little bit later on. But that's what we want to have on the back. Now, the front of the church is a tad bit more complicated, because, of course, it's, it's the entrance. It's meant to be a little bit more ornate and interesting. Okay. Let's add some windows. On the left and right sides, I want you to add a row of smooth quartz inwards, with then a row of glass inwards from that. The glass goes from the bottom to the top of the frame, so it should just be a row of three like this. We then want to add two more rows of quartz, one, two, to the right, and they want to extend from the bottom of the frame to the top of the frame, just like this. Perfect. When it comes to the inside portion of this, we only need three rows of quartz. One. Well, I, I guess I should have counted that, right? Like one, two, and three. So one, two, three like this. One, two, three. You guys hopefully get the idea. One, two, three. One, two, three. As, as big as the windows that we have left and right. This is what we want to have. Now, you see, the significance of this is we want to take that third row and we want to place upside down quartz stairs extending outwards from that third row like this. You can even connect the top of the door frame together as well using block of quartz like this. You'll need two rows of it. And then this outwards portion here, we're going to add a row of block of quartz bridging the gap between the quartz stairs. And then you can choose to ha look, it's kind of up to you, right? So I've kind of chosen to have this plus shaped window. It's vaguely sort of supposed to look like a cross. We actually ran out of room, so we can't place uh, another cross. Um, well, you can, I can show you how to do it, but it, it just won't look as good. It looks quite good as it is, but regardless of that, that is what the front will look like. And ultimately we will have a door here, but we'll be adding that a tad bit later. So now that we've done that, and honestly not looking too bad, we can add the tower. There is a large tower towards the front of the church. It's rather easy to make, but it means that we've got to locate two area well actually you can pick this right either side of the door it literally does not matter which side of the door one chooses it does not matter i'm going to choose this right side i want you to follow it up to the block of quartz that we have so right of the door follow it up this is the block of the quartz block of quartz up at the top here i want you to place a block of quartz behind this and then on top of this i want you to place five one two three four five block of quartz extending upwards just like this now i want you to do the same on the opposite side which would be here and then I want you to extend that upwards also by 5. So this is going to mark out the tower. Now, I'm not 100% sure that that is quite tall enough, so we will be doing that a little bit later. But it's important that it's marked out. And if you like, you can even add a solid row of... Whoops, my bad. You can even add a solid row of quartz between them. So just to kind of like further signify that it's a tower. You can even make it 3D if you like. I don't know why we haven't done that yet, but you can take the top corners of the tower here and extend them back 1, 2, 3, 4. We want to make it a square so one two three four just like this right we want to connect it together and then you can go to some lengths if you like because we'll be we'll more than likely be able to cover this up inside of the church and if not i mean we can make alterations to the structure of it so that we can cover it up you can connect it down it'll actually make placing the roof a little bit easier and it might also help you with um, a little bit of visualization and stuff um you know sometimes it's a little bit easier to make something if you can see the design of it um, beforehand. So we're going to just leave it like that for now. But what else do we want to do? So the middle part of the church on the left and right sides, 
the this is slightly different in the fact that it's a little bit larger so this row of light gray concrete here we want to have five rows of block of quartz on top of it so one two three four five and we want to have that present throughout the entire row of light gray concrete as again very easy hopefully quite structurally easy to build and we want this on both sides, so only have to count this once. One, two, three, four, five, boom. Easy, 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 easy. Uh, we have to add some windows to this as well, but we'll probably do that once we have just added, um, once we've added the roof. So, to join this together, it's actually the exact same process that we did earlier. We take the left and right sides of these two walls that we've created, and we extend the sides inwards and upwards and inwards and upwards. Do I have to say it again? Let's go for three times. Inwards and upwards until eventually it all joins together. Nice. There we go. Easy, easy, easy. We want to do the same thing on the front as well. This will join to the tower. So just like this. And same on the other side here as well. It's important that this joins to the tower. We'll, we'll actually do the roof for the... Actually, as a matter of fact, this is, how, this is how we know whether the tower on the front is big enough, right? So, this is the apex for the roof on the back of the church. If you stick a stone slab on here and extend that stone slab forwards like this... Perfect. This is the ideal size for the tower. The slab should just be half a row above it. So let's let's come back to the tower now. I know we're bouncing around, but hey, this is this is me. On top of the tower, I want you to place a row of upside down smooth quartz stairs going all the way around the top of the tower. This I, I don't know what to call it of them, perhaps like a lip. This lip around the top of the tower signifies that that's kind of like the edge. That's that's the part that you would be able to walk on. I'm going to fill the top of this in using stone bricks, but it's almost irrelevant what you do fill it in with. And then, inside this, on the four corners of the square of stone bricks that you have created, you want to place rows of four, one, two, three, four, smooth quartz. So this is going to create almost like a little bell tower. You can even add a bell into it, although I haven't myself because it you barely even be able to see it, but you could if you just really wanted to yourself. And if you did want to do that, you know, just fill the top of it in and then we can we will add a little bell later. Maybe we'll even like add a chain to it. So you'll you'll be able to see it from some angles like this, but like for the most part, I mean you're not really gonna be able to like if you're on the ground, I guess you you will be able to, but so anyway. When it comes to the top of this, we then want to add a row of... Let's get rid of the dark oak door, because we, we don't even need that. I don't know why we have it. Well, we do need it, but not yet. We want to use a row of smooth quartz slabs around the top of the tower here. Just like this. Perfect. And then, we're going to place stone bricks in the center of each one of the four sides of the bell tower. We're then going to place stone brick stairs joining it together on the four corners. This is very important, like this. Um, you can even fill this in if you like, but again, it's almost irrelevant because now that we've done this, we want to take the four, the the three by three square that is the center of this tower, and we want to place two rows of stone bricks on top of it. So um, hopefully that makes sense, right? So we went all the way around. We placed a stone brick on the middle part of each tower. You can even place like a, an extra slab if you want on top of those, if you want to differentiate them from the surrounding stairs. And then you want to raise up the center by two rows. And then we're going to raise up the, the center again, but the center center by two rows, one, two. And then we're going to place stone bricks surrounding it like this. So we don't want to fill in the corners. And then ultimately, we want to take the middle and we want to extend it up by a further two. One, two, to create a steeple. I think that that's a term for it, like a pointy roof or a spire perhaps. And then on top of this, we then want to place four. One, two, three. Three, four, cobblestone wall, take the one away from the top and extend it left and right by one. So, in the end, you will get this very fancy, very luxurious cross atop the steeple or spire. I think it's a steeple when it comes to a church, although I don't know my church uh, architecture as well as I should do.
are well. So now that we've done this, what we can now do is we can add some windows to the sides of the build and then we can add the roof and then we can add the surrounding area and then we can move on to the inside. So when it comes to the left and right sides of your church, it's actually rather easy to add the windows. The windows occupy the three middle rows of Actually, that's that's the wrong that's the wrong uh, road to knock out. They occupy the three middle rows of smooth quartz, so one away from the top, one away from the bottom. The windows are two rows away from each other as well, so two rows away from the side, they're in the middle. Two rows away from each other, two rows away from each other, two rows away from each other. You'll have three windows in total with two uh, with a gap of two between each of them. They sit in the middle of the wall in the kind of like the Y. Uh, the Y coordinate, and that is what they look like. So, easy, hopefully. So, on this opposite side, once again, one away from the top, one away from the bottom, two rows away from each other and from the sides, and you will get a nice set of evenly spaced windows, which I would recommend filling in with some black glass pane. But that's just me. It, ju it just seems to go. If you want, and we will try this at the end of the video if you like as well, we can make it colourful using some stained glass, which would make even more sense perhaps. Okay, the roof. I mean, the roof is actually so easy, like, it, incredibly easy. you got two components to this, three rarely, but two are the same as each other. On the front and the back, we add rows of uh, stone brick stairs that sit on the side of the frame of the roof here on the front and the back, it kind of like sits on the side of the triangle that we have on the front and the back, just like this, right? Um, the roof wants to overhang the front of the church by one row, just like this. It's, it's actually the same that you would make any roof. If you wanted to make it look nice, um, just using one material, then you would, you would do pretty much any roof this way. You would overhang it, Add upside down stairs underneath the overhang, just like this, extending all the way up to the top. Um, all the upside down stairs, like this, 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 this. Perfect. And then, uh, hopefully a little bit of common sense, uh, you then extend the stairs backwards. Um, to, uh, And the stairs will connect to actually nothing in this particular case. But you can add this in after. So, like, you connect it to thin air. But then we can add some quartz in um, after the fact. And we want to do the same here as well on this side. But the middle part of the roof as well. Again, it's the same thing. So the stairs on the side. And I'm just going to do the outer frame of this. And then I think I'll actually speed it up. Because um, I, I don't really want you guys to have to suffer through me making the entire roof. Because it's rather large. Um, and it's rather easy as well. Um, so we'll just add in the frame. We'll add in the upside down stairs, all of that. We'll make it look fancy, but when it comes to filling in the roof, and when it comes to the back roof also, because that's already been done once before, I think that we should be good. So there we go. You can see that, that is, that's how the edge of the roof wants to look right. Um, same thing when it comes to the back. Because the two roofs, like the lower roof and the larger roof, um, they never come into contact with, with each other. You can have the fancy stairs hanging underneath and stuff, and it, um, it won't get in the way. You'll actually have a nice little gap, and uh, it looks quite nice because it's, it's quite a contrast of materials and shape. So it actually looks better for it as well. So um, you can see how, um, I mean, we've done that side and we've done the, uh, um, we're doing the back. And once you join all of the roofs together as well, so like when you eventually do this one and join it, you'll have to add probably some, uh, you'll have to say like here, for instance, you'll have to add uh, an extra quartz. But you could even preemptively, preemptively, like I'm doing now, add in an extra quartz as you go. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm now going to do, because hopefully that kind of demonstrates to you how you do the roof. It all just uh, We've done half of it, literally. We just have to do the other half. Um, I'm going to speed this next part up of me doing the roof, and uh, then we can continue on. We'll actually be working on the um, kind of like the outer grounds after this. So that's going to be cool. Thank you. 
And there we go. I believe that we have done all of the roof now. So hopefully that should all be nice and super sped up for you so that you don't have to sit through all of that boringness. But you'll probably have to pause the video for yourself. Make sure that you have completed all of the roofs of, as I have. And once you have got them all filled in, it should be really, really easy. We can work on the outer grounds of the church. So what do we need when it comes to the the outer grounds of the church. I'm trying to work this out for myself right now. We need some light grey concrete. We need diorite wall, a material that I'm falling in love with for some reason. We need a shovel. We'll need some soul lanterns. I only just put that together. It's kind of funny that we're using soul lanterns at the church. Um, white tulips, jungle leaves, flower parts, and we might not need too much. Oh, we need a terracotta. And I'll tell you what, we will leave it at that. So, when it comes to the outside of the church, we are going to place light grey concrete on the two front corners of the grid. We also want to have light grey concretes corresponding to where the left and right side of the entrance is. It wants to look like this. We want to have a row of three grass in between, like, we, we want to have a row of free clear grass in between the two posts of light grey concrete. We want to be able to have a grass path that leads us from the centre to the inward part of the church, with soul lanterns on either side. And again, that seems somewhat symbolic now that I've called them soul lanterns. I completely forgot that's what they were called. I want to have two rows of free terracotta underneath the front two windows right in the middle. I'm going to place flower pots on the terracotta and I'm going to fill them with white tulips. I just like them. You can feel free to add any flower that you like. On the sides of the church, I want to have rows of leaves. The leaves are going to kind of go all the way around the edge of the middle part of the church and then I'm going to also have white tulips but again feel free to change flower um, kind of like extending along the rows of light grey. If you want you can even wrap the tulips around the back of the church like this and we want to have the exact same thing on both sides as well with the leaves so I know that I've placed too many tulips by the way but we'll be coming back to this. Um, I think that it just makes it look a little bit nicer. It's um, it's very, very simple as well, which I want, because uh, I don't really want to detract from the shape of the church too much. I don't want to, I want that to be the complete center focal point. We're going to have diorite wall in between all of the light gray concrete. I should have also mentioned that we want to have two light gray concretes on, well, one light gray concrete on the back two corners of the grid like this so we want to have wall extending to light gray concretes on each one of the four corners essentially like so and i don't really want white i don't even actually mind white concrete underneath the walls because i don't want grass so you could have white concrete underneath the wall you could have light gray white is actually fine by me I, I don't mind that at all i think that that looks quite nice um, we're going to have a path. The path is going to go all the way around the church. So essentially, the path is going to be one row in between the wall and one row. Um, it's going to be one row from the wall and one row from the church as we extend around. So that might not be obvious as we look at it. And I guess that we've just got two rows at the front here, but that's perfectly fine. Um, but you can see that on the left side we've got the hedge here so that's one row and one row and it's persistent throughout the entire outside of the church it just looks nice it looks clean i i really like how that ends up looking and that ladies and gentlemen is essentially the outside of the church complete very very happy with that and hopefully you are too which means we have to work on the inside of the church and i just had to adjust my plans there so i can see what i'm doing and uh let's head inside now because there's a lot of work to be done in here so first of all we're going to have to do um some what's the best word for this really like we're going to have to tune up some of the structure of the inside of the church um to do this we're going to be using light gray concrete all of the quartz so smooth quartz blocks smooth quartz stairs smooth quartz slabs um what else do we need maybe even a little bit of pillar quartz block 
um, we need the stairs. We we need like the stone brick stairs as well, and the stone bricks. And I've just realised something that we should add to the outside. So what I'm going to also recommend is grabbing some stone brick slab and some stone brick wall. Something that I want you to add, or what I would recommend adding, because I mean it's up to you. The roofs, we have three kind of like apexes of the roof that we have opportunities to add crosses on. So, it looks all fine and well now. I, I like how it looks, but you, this is a personal choice. On the corners of the roof, you might want to add a slab, and then you might want to create a cross using... Um, Basically, I'm, I'm just using like free stone brick wall here, and then I'm making the middle of the wall, um, I'm extending that to the left and right. I don't want to make it any higher because I don't want to interfere with the shape of the inside of the bell tower. But I'm going to do that on the front, and I'm going to do that on the back, and I think it will look quite good. On the back, it doesn't matter as much. Like, you can make it a bit higher if you want. But I feel as though that for continuity, we will keep it all the same. We'll have the rows of three. And I know it kind of looks like just a plus shape. It, it doesn't look exactly like a cross. But I think it looks enough like a cross that I think that you'll understand the vibe that we're going for. I think it does add a little something. It adds a little volume, and it adds a little, adds a little something else to the church. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. Anyway, coming back to the inside now that we've done that. So the church really is only two parts on the inside. We've got kind of like the altar area and we've kind of got, well, the, the seating area. The pews, are they called? I don't know. <laughs> so the altar area is all the way at the back of the church where we have the giant cross in the back. Um, I'm going to recommend that we seal up or, as a matter of fact, yeah, come on. Okay, yeah, it is this block. So I'm going to recommend that we basically just connect the back of this together. So a row of smooth quartz block joining the kind of like sticky in part of the build. Um, behind this, we're going to fill it in using light gray concrete like this. That's perfect. Um, I'm going to take these corner blocks here and I'm going to turn them into smooth quartz. And then on the left and right side, I want you to do this. So we're going to have a row of one, two, three, destroy two blocks, and replace them with stairs. So it's going to be like one, two, three, destroy two blocks, replace them with stairs. I'm then going to extend on the inward side here, so or more so on the outward side of the stairs, I'm going to have a row of smooth quartz that extends from next to the stair all the way up to the ceiling like this. So that's perfect. There has to be an altar. And by the way, I'm also going to the area in between these two sets of stairs destroy, turn into um, grey concrete. Um, the altar is very simple. I think that I'm going to have um, a solid... Actually, I, I want to make sure that I get this correct. I think that... Oh, okay, this is where it is, right? So, on the left and right sides, we want to have kind of like... Um, smooth, ju just smooth quartz slabs kind of like floating but in the middle an upside down smooth quartz stair so you kind of get that floating platform sort of feel I really like that I think that that's pretty cool um, so we're actually going to leave that as it is because this is kind of like the altar area and we can easily decorate this a little bit later although if you use your pillar quartz block if you leave a gap of two between like where the window of the cross is, so leave a gap of two and then place pillar quartz, gap of two and then pillar quartz just like here, um, that will set us up a little bit later as well. It's also worth marking out that where we have kind of like these gaps on the left and right, if you start from the bottom of the gap here and you extend upwards like one, two, so here, um, I want you to place two sets or just one set of two upside down smooth quartz stairs extending towards you you can even have them extending inwards as well and you can join them together using smooth quartz slab so again we're kind of like just framing the area a little bit more as well inside the altar area i'd also recommend adding upside down stone brick stairs to the like under part of the roof just to give it a bit of shape it uh, it just makes it feel a little bit better in here i haven't 100 percent figured out whether it's going to um whether we're then going to cover it up 
Like, I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So, I, I, I don't mind leaving it exposed like that because I feel as though they also almost adds a little bit of intrigue. I, I sort of like it. I don't mind having it open because they're not supposed to be perfect uh, by any means, I don't think. I mean, they're supposed to be a little bit older and um, a little bit more, like, interesting architecturally. But we can figure that out a little bit later on. So, what else do we want to do? So, when it comes to the center of the church, where all of the seating area is, or whatever you would call it, we want to um, also kind of, like, section an area off as well. So, where the church, again, starts to, like, stick out a little bit, like, the opposite side of, like, the middle part of the church, we want to extend this light gray concrete inwards here. We want to extend it one, two, three, and then four, like this. And one, two, three, four. So we want to have a middle row of three uh, that we're able to just like walk through the entire church like the aisle. Um, we're going to turn this central block here into a block of quartz. This central block here into a block of quartz. Um, we want to have the same rows of quartz, as uh, of smooth quartz. Um, in these rows that we have over there so we want to like connect these up to the ceiling in the same manner and in the same place as we do here so this to this and it should even look similar so that's pretty cool um, we want to now add a couple of row we want to add a row of stone brick stairs in front of each of the row of smooth quartz so row of stone bricks leave a gap and then stone bricks on both sides we want to have a gap of one, and then we want to have a row of smooth quartz block, just like this. In front of this, we then want to have another row of stone bricks, gap of one, and then another row of stone bricks. Feel free to change the uh, change the stairs into a different color if you like. If you'd prefer like wooden seats, feel free, but um, I really like the color scheme. I think it's really, really simple, and as a result of that, I think it looks really nice. Um, what else do we want to have? So... Talking about the pillars from earlier, like this set of pillars here and this set of pillars here, we also want to have a set of pillars like in the middle. So like where we have the extra row of quartz, we want to add an extra pillar of smooth quartz here and an extra pillar of smooth quartz here, extending all the way up to the ceiling. Perfect. So as a matter of fact as well, you know how we added the smooth quartz slabs earlier to the stairs? Well... That we don't quite want to do it that way. The smooth quartz slab wants to actually sit on top of the uh, on top of the stairs like this to create an arch, and we're going to anywhere that it would be feasible for the uh, for the uh, pillars and the stairs to connect together with like rows of slabs and stuff. We want to join it all together. So we've got it at the front here, and we have the, this pad that sticks out. So we want to create a little archway here in between like the front half of the pillar and. Um, the actual altar and also the back half of the pillar and the front of the church we want to add this and we also want to have the um, smooth quartz slabs again it's it's a bit of an architectural sort of design like I noticed that there's there's always like loads of curves and arches and stuff when it comes to churches um, that, that's why we have one at the entrance as well it just seems to be that way so um, I guess it's a structural thing but I also think it looks really nice it just it doesn't it sort of add something like it almost makes it feel grander it's I, I don't know makes it a little cozier I, i'm not quite sure it, it definitely feels different though when it comes to the front of the church where we have the entrance area here i'm basically just going to add um just directly behind where the entrance is i'm just adding enough smooth quartz that it turns it into a, a bit of a box area just like this and then i'm also going to fill just up above this window in here using some smooth quartz too and yeah that that looks pretty good to me like we don't have to be able to look all the way up to the top of the bell tower um what i do want to have though and we maybe we should have done this first whilst it would have been easier but hey what can you do right i mean who would have who would have known how this was going to go um i'm going to place rows of stone brick stairs underneath the overhanging um, no, overhanging, I don't know what I'm talking about. Underneath the actual stone brick stairs for the roof, 
And again, it, it just makes it look a little bit better. Plus, it makes the pillars that we placed earlier, not literally made out of pillar quartz, but it makes the pillars that we placed earlier um, look as though that they are more integrated into the actual building. So when we place, like, you can see the difference. Like, it, it makes it look as though that it's really structurally integral to the build. Or at least, I think that. But what do I know? So... Here, perfect. So, yes, that is looking pretty good. Um, we could add a couple of rows of smooth quartz here. That's not too bad. If we wanted to, we can kind of... Oh, we've, we've also got to, got to extend these stairs as well at the front. Almost forgot about these because it's a very small row. And then we can kind of, like, figure out how to just integrate it. Because it's, um, again, I don't mind having kind of, like, the exposed stairs. Kind of, like, how we do over there and over here. Like, I almost think it makes it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, I quite like that. I'm semi-tempted to add another row, although I didn't do this on the original. I'm semi-tempted to add another row here, because then it, um, it kind of, like, hides that. But then, if we've got this at the front, it almost makes it look a little bit more special. So, I'm, I'm quite tempted to just leave that. I think that this looks fine. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Perhaps, if we wanted, we could add, um, I don't know, maybe just... Yeah, maybe, maybe just like uh, an upside down quartz stair in each corner. I mean, we could have it, we could extend it up if we want. We could turn it into, I mean, that, yeah, that, that almost looks a little bit more interesting. I don't, I don't mind that. That looks okay. So I've just added a couple of stairs just to kind of like vary the shape of it. Quite happy with that. Um, what about around here? So... It might be cool if we also, like, add an upside-down smooth quartz stair here and here, like, behind the back of the pillars, and then have smooth quartz slabs extend across and join to the top of the windows, and then across like this, and then here, and then here... I'm all. I'm almost tempted to sort of like. I, I want to see what. I, what did I do in originally? So originally, what I did was I actually chunked out the two corners. Corners of this. I made it look a little bit. Um, actually, yeah. Okay. So I chunked out the two corners of this here. Um, this wasn't as bulky, as a matter of fact. So I guess. What if, we, what if we take this out? Because I'm not 100% happy. What if we take out all of this extra quartz? I think that this might actually look a little bit better. We'll have the smooth quartz slabs run across the top of this. Maybe even have another row here so they all just joins together a little bit better. That actually, that's actually looking pretty good. Um, what about, can we open this up at all? So, we're gonna open up, like, around the window here as well. Have it a bit more open. And maybe what we could do is we can have some more of the exposed stone bricks. Um, I'm sorry that this has almost been an experiment. Um, we could have some more exo exposed stone bricks here. And stone bricks, exposed stone bricks here. And what about when it comes to the top? Uh, we've got to have this here, and then what if what if we have just another row then? So we'll add just another row of upside, upside down stone bricks like this, and then we can just run a row of stone brick slabs just up at the top here, and maybe we can just leave it at that. Yeah, that's it. that almost seems a little bit better, to be quite honest. It, it feels a little bit more open. It feels a little bit cleaner, a little bit less boxy. I quite like that. Okay. On either side of the door, just in these corners, I'm going to place pillar quartz block. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the red concrete. I'm going to grab... Um, what else? Oh, and the door. And then we'll, we'll sort everything else out. Uh, actually, you know what, we'll grab jungle leaves as well, we'll grab the lectern, we'll grab the book and quill, end rod, soul torch, loom, um, smooth quartz stair. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out the floor and I'm going to replace it using red concrete. So this shouldn't be too big of a task, or too large of a task. 
um, because we've got all of the seats and stuff in. We've already got like behind the altar that's already um, been filled in with light grey concrete. Um, red just seems to go. So here, for th this uh, this was my logic and rational rationale, and I don't know why. Like whenever you see like people get married and like walking down the aisle and stuff. Like, it almost always seems to be like a red carpet, right? Or at least it does in my mind. So hence, I decided to use red concrete. I could have used red carpet. I know what you're thinking. That would have even made more sense. Nah. I think I, I really like the concrete. There's a, sort, there's a certain um, texture that the concrete gives that I like more so over the wall. And... Um, oh no, I, I just like it a little bit more. It's a little bit more vibrant as well. It's like a solid block color rather than like the wall where it's almost like I want to say muddy but like I, d I just I like the texture of it better and I think that you might agree that red really does like have a striking um it makes a striking difference I think um all the way up at the top of the altar here I'm going to place a lectern behind it with a book and quill so that is obviously like a little podium that whoever would read from uh, we're going to place jungle leaves on top of the pillar quartz blocks. We have these at the front and the back of the build. Um, left and right of the altar as well, I want to find these specific positions. Um, might even be like left and right of the lectern, or it might be here. I can't actually tell from this image that I've taken, but um, the idea was to have like end rods and soul torches like next to... You can't place soul torches on end rods in, in this version. Well, that is, that's severely annoying. I'm going to be honest with you. You you can in Java, but apparently you cannot in Bedrock. Um, so I guess that the alternate to that is just to stack the end rods two rows high, and um, it just kind of looks like candles. Um, another alternate is to use instead of soul torches, since apparently you can't place them in this version is to use some sort of fence. It doesn't matter which, to be quite honest. It's up to you. Um, the reason that I'm going with uh, Dark Oak is because we've got a little bit of it coming up in the build. Um, there we go, we have an altar. It looked better with the end roll with soul torches, I'm going to be honest with you, but apparently we can't do that. Um, just underneath and in the middle of this little window at the back here, I'm going to have a set of three looms. Smooth quartz stairs behind that is just like an organ or a piano that uh, so we can play some music. I'm going to place some dark oak signs around the chair here just to make it look a little bit different. Integrate it into the area a little bit more. We're also going to have some dark oak signs on the sides of the... Again, I d whatever the seating area is called specifically. I have a feeling that it's called pews, but I, I might have made that up. I, d I don't know. Um, I'm going to add some soul lanterns. Now... Yeah, I, I think I'm going to use soul lanterns for this. I, it's either soul lanterns or regular lanterns. I guess you can uh, pick or choose, but um, just on the areas where the seats are, just to add a little bit of light. I think they adds a little something something. Um, this area here towards the front, I kind of like the idea of having like kind of like a collection box. Um, so if you have like a smooth quartz block on the left and right sides here with smooth quartz stairs in between Although yeah, no, we should be fine. Hopefully um, So smooth quartz blocks with smooth quartz stairs in between and then This is this this is actually it. This is pretty much it unless you want to add stained glass windows Which we can give a go if you like um, I like the idea of jukebox That's kind of like a collection box so you can put money in there or uh, an item frame is kind of like those pan things, um, the plates or whatever, the collection plates that uh, go around and you can donate to the church or whatever if you uh, feel so feel so inclined. Okay, so the last thing, and I do mean the last thing because I've, I'm quite happy. Oh no, did we ever add the door? I don't think we added the door. Hang on, the, the door's quite important. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. So that's why we've got a little bit of dark oak everywhere. Like, the dark oak door seemed like the one that went best. So that's why we have these accents of um, dark oak everywhere. And plus, you could even turn the seats into dark oak if you wanted to as well. But again, I quite like how this is. But feel free to change it, chop and change it as you see fit. Okay. What else? I'm kind of curious myself now. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, st I'm looking at these seats and I'm like, would these look better in dark oak? There's only one way to find out. So, 
Let's have a look. I mean, better is a relative term anyway. I mean, better is like, if you like them more. Like, subjective, I should say, not relative. Like, better is a subjective term. Like, if, if you like it more, then it's better. If somebody else likes it less, it doesn't matter. Like, it's, it's what you think. It's completely subjective. So, let's have a look. And we can compare sides. I'm doing it to one whole side. Just like this. It doesn't look out of place, honestly. It, it doesn't look too bad. It, it, it looks quite nice. It works with the door as well. So, you know, left or right, A or B, ketchup or catsup, it's up to you. You could even... I, I don't mind the chair sticking out at the top, actually. That's okay. Anyway, what you could also do, stained glass. Very common in older churches. I don't know about newer ones. I don't know if they build new churches. I'm going to be honest with you. But I'm going to grab some different colors of glass and instead of having just the dark glass you can mix in some different colors of glass and that represents the different stained glass images of um, scenes from the bible and whatever um, all sorts of stuff that they put in religious figures and stuff um, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Like, do you think it looks better with the stained glass? Do you think it looks better with the plane? Um, do you think that perhaps just the cross back here should be stained glass? That's up to you. So, here, here. Well, so we need a yellow, maybe even an orange. You know, do you think that it looks better with a little bit of stained glass? Is It's completely up to you. Um, as a matter of fact, myself, I am going to change the side windows to stained glass. I'm also going to change the seats to dark oak because I like that better. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually finished this build. Well done. So this is what your church will look like once it has been 100% fully completed inside and out. I'm really, really happy with the design of the church. It's a nice mix of, like, modern and old. Like, the materials are somewhat modern, but the design is old, and it comes together nicely. Like, this would fit in so many different uh, places, like a, a new city, an older city, like a town. It, I, I think that it kind of, like, fits anywhere. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. It helps me in the channel out very, very much. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to make anything else by me, especially city-related builds, check out the card system in the description below and the top of the comment section for more. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.